Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I will be sharing my time with the Minister of Public Safety. On Monday, as we entered the third week of illegal blockades and occupations, the federal government invoked the Emergencies Act. We did it to protect families and small businesses, to protect jobs and the economy. We did it because the situation could not be dealt with under any other law in Canada. Mr. Speaker, we did it because that's what responsible leadership requires us to do. For the good of all Canadians, the illegal blockades and occupations have to stop and the borders have to remain open. We've made progress since Monday. On Tuesday, the border was reopened in southern Alberta after the Coots blockade was dismantled. The RCMP arrested a small group of people within the larger blockade and seized firearms, ammunition and body armor. It is believed that this group was willing to use force against police officers. On Wednesday, the blockade in Emerson, Manitoba had been cleared without arrests or charges. Traffic and trade at this border crossing have now resumed. In Windsor, Mayor Dilkins said law enforcement was able to successfully intercept a new convoy suspected of heading to the Ambassador Bridge. And here in Ottawa, law enforcement now has more tools and resources in order to give the people of this city their jobs, neighbourhoods and freedoms back. A Windsor. In Windsor, Coots and Emerson, illegal blockades have been cleared and traffic and trade at the border crossings have now resumed or are in the process of doing so. And I would like to thank the police forces for, for their work, including the RCM, RCMP members on the ground. For the good of the economy, families and workers, it is high time that these illegal and dangerous activities stop, including here in Ottawa. Mr. Speaker, invoking the Emergencies Act is not something that we do lightly. It's not the first option, or even the second or the third. It is a last resort. When I consulted the, Prime Minister, the premiers of the provinces and territories on Monday, I was very clear, by blocking supply chains, these illegal blockades are doing considerable harm to our economy and to all Canadians. It's consistent with the requirements of the Emergencies Act that the views of the premiers of all provinces and territories be carefully considered, and that is what we did. And the consultation and collaboration with the premiers will continue until the situation is resolved. Like I said on Monday, the scope of the Emergencies Act is time-limited and targeted, as well as reasonable and proportionate. It strengthens and supports law enforcement agencies so they have more tools to restore order and protect critical infrastructure. These illegal blockades are being heavily supported by individuals in the United States and from elsewhere around the world. We see that roughly half of the funding that is flowing to the barricaders here is coming from the United States. The goal of all measures, including financial measures in the Emergencies Act, is to deal with the current threat only and to get the situation fully under control. Mr. Speaker, I want to reassure Canadians that when the Emergencies Act is invoked, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms continues to protect their individual rights. We're not using the Emergencies Act to call in the military. We're not limiting people's freedom of expression. We're not limiting freedom of peaceful assembly. We're not preventing people from exercising their right to protest legally. We are, in fact, reinforcing the principles, values and institutions that keep all Canadians free. The blockades and occupations are illegal. 
They're a threat to our economy and relationship with trading partners. They're a threat to supply chains and the availability of essential goods like food and medicine. And they're a threat to public safety. The Emergencies Act will be time limited and targeted to address threats from illegal occupations and blockades only. The measures are reasonable and proportional. And I want to make it clear for Canadians, Mr. Speaker, when the Emergencies Act is invo invoked, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms continues to protect individual rights. We do not use the Emergencies Act to deploy the military. We do not suspend fundamental rights. We don't restrict freedom of expression or the right to peaceful protest. What we want is to keep Canadians safe, protect workers' jobs, and restore confidence in our institutions. We understand that everyone is tired of this pandemic. We understand that Canadians are frustrated with COVID. Some protesters came to Ottawa to express their frustration and fatigue with public health measures, and that's their right. Like I said, it's a right that we'll defend in this free and democratic country. But illegal blockades and occupations are not peaceful protests. They have to stop. We are all looking forward to the end of the pandemic. Public health measures are constantly being reevaluated, and we will continue to modify them based on science and the situation. And we will continue to encourage vaccination. This week, based on advice from public health experts, Health Minister Duclos announced that we'll soon, soon start easing border measures for travellers. Our government, the health minister... Uh, if, I can, if, I, if, I can interrupt the, if I if I can interrupt the Prime Minister for a second, we, we, need, we, need, we need to make sure we're not using proper names in here, so we want to stick to the writing, the writing names. The, honorable, the right Honourable Prime Minister. This week, based on advice from public health experts, the health minister announced that we'll soon start easing border measures for travellers. Our government will continue to follow the best scientific advice to keep Canadians safe and support health care workers. People are making sacrifices and have been for two years. It's never time to hurt our communities or our fellow Canadians with illegal blockades, but especially not now that we're reopening and beginning to get back to the things we love. That's why, Mr. Speaker, it is so important for us to be having this debate today and in the days to come, and for Parliament to play its role in this process. Today, I ask all members of this House to take action against illegal blockades that are harmful to Canadians. I ask all members of this House to stand up for families and workers, to stand up for jobs and our economy, and to stand up for the freedom of Canadians and for public safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next,